What's up guys? Today we'll be checking out the Zapiti Pro 4K HDR Media Player. The reason I wanted this player in for review was because a lot of you guys out there saw our Kaleidoscape video and was appalled by the asking price. It seemed there were a ton of folks out there that would love to have their entire collections of movies in one location for quick access without having to mess around with little discs or pay 9 grand for a movie player. So I searched the entire internet to find a more affordable alternative. Well, I came across Zapiti. Some of you may have heard of them before. They're a French company that makes these high quality media players. Now this isn't like Kaleidoscape where you purchase movies from an online store. This is for all you guys that already have music, TV shows, and movies already backed up on hard drives. This device should play back everything. So let's get this unboxed and go over some tech specs. But before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, we discuss all things audio and video, like new movies and new AV equipment. So if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. All right, let's get this thing unboxed. The Zapiti Pro 4K HDR retails for $9.99 at the time of this video. Inside, we get a nice Zapiti cover sheet. The accessories box containing an HDMI cable, not one, but four different power cords for different regions. An ethernet cable. Two antennas. An IR extender. A USB stick. The remote control. And the manual. Now this is a heavy device weighing 16.5 pounds. Up front, you'll find the Zapiti logo dead center. On the left is the power button and USB input. On the right is the headphone jack, IR sensor, and an additional USB in. And if you notice that little logo, this is the first media player to be ISF certified, so you should expect a high level of video quality. Around back is the power input. There's an output here called zero signal. This will cancel any mass loop effects by connecting this to a free RCA input. It should keep your video free of noise. There's three USB inputs, a Type 2 and 3, and a Type C. A LAN input, IR extender in, an HDMI in, and two HDMI outputs with one dedicated for audio only. There's optical and coax digital outputs and a composite AV output as well. Oh, I forgot to mention the build quality. This feels just like the Panasonic UB9000 4K Blu-ray player. It's got that brushed aluminum finish all around, and it's very dense. It measures 17 inches wide, by 13 inches deep, by 3.4 inches high. Now this doesn't come with any storage when you get it, so you'll have to add your own. You can do this by dropping the flip down door down and adding your own hard drives. It can take two 3.5 inch SATA drives up to 32 terabyte. Anyone can do the install, just open the door and put in the drive and you're good to go. The one I have here came with a 3 terabyte drive with some demo material. Obviously the bigger the drive, the more movies you can store. If you have content on external drives, you can also connect to any one of the USB inputs. The Zapiti is supposed to support just about any file you throw at it, and that includes 4K at 60 frames per second. It's got Dolby Atmos and DTSX support, and of course, HDR. I'm not sure about Dolby Vision, so we'll have to find out. It runs on Android, and it's got a quad-core Realtek RTD-1295 processor in it with 2 gigs of RAM. Oh, and it plays back 3D as well. Hopefully ISOs, because I've got a ton of them. For setup, I'll be hooking this up to an Emotiva XMC2 and a JVC NX7. For comparison, I've got the Panasonic UB9000. Now let's take a quick look at some of the settings. When you first power it on, you'll be brought to the main homepage. Up top is where you can get to the settings. Anyone familiar with older Android tablets should find this very familiar. Here we've got the basic wireless settings, which I'm sure I don't have to dig into. FYI, if you pair this with a Bluetooth keyboard, it makes entering text a whole lot easier. Plus, you can use it to browse the web. Under display, you can manually select your resolution or keep it on auto. You can change the font size if you need bigger text. 
For HDMI range, you can keep this on auto, or if you have issues with color, you can manually select it yourself. You can check this off if you want to keep HD 24Hz playback. If you have a low nit display, the HDR to SDR conversion might be useful. If you're using the analog out, you can turn on the CVBS switch. Okay, let's take a look at the installed apps. Most of these are stock Android apps, except for the Zapiti ones. It doesn't come with Kodi, I installed that one myself. Spoiler, it doesn't work very good. Under storage, if you have any attached drives, it'll show up here. You can see here that I've got a few external drives hooked up. Alright, let's go over to the HDMI settings. Here's the CEC control and all the functions that are available for it. You can turn this feature on or off. And just be sure you have this set to 2.0 if you want to have HDR capability. And let's just take a real quick peek at the developer settings. For HDMI range, you might want to keep this on auto. Unless your display looks off, then you can manually adjust this to see if it helps. There's a bunch of other stuff, but I don't want this video to drag on too much. So I'm only just going to go over what I think is relevant. I should also mention that if you have an issue where you're not getting HDR on your projector or your television, then you could toggle the switch to get HDR working again. That's what happened to my display and I couldn't figure it out for the longest. Just a quick toggle of this switch and everything was working fine. So uh, just keep that in mind. And that's it for the settings. If I missed something, then just leave a comment and I'll see if I can go back and check it out. Alright, let's head over to the inbuilt apps. As you can see, this actually has a full Google Play Store, so you can download games and anything you can do on your Android phone. There's also Aptoid, which is an App Store alternative. Zipidi Service is where you'll go and manage all Zipidi's own apps. You can change resolution settings here rather than going into the Android menu. And there's also a direct output mode toggle. If you turn it on, it'll bypass the Zipidi's upscaling and send the video untouched over to your display to do all the processing. If you have a really good upscaler or a processor like a Lumigen, then you'd probably want to turn this off and let that do all the processing. If your display isn't so great at upscaling content to 4K, then you might want to keep this off and let the Zipidi do all the processing. We'll check that out in a few to see how good it is. Okay, so I haven't tried this for music playback since I have this in my theater, and it's strictly for movie watching, but I'll just load it up anyways. I've got no music on my drive, so we'll have to come back to this another time. And here we have Google Chrome if you want to browse the internet. This is really useful if you have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse combo plugged up into it. I used one of these Logitechs and it worked perfectly fine. The Clean Master is basically a task killer. If you notice this PD is getting sluggish or maybe an app is frozen, then you can just come over here and tap the cleaner. Now straight out of the box, the YouTube app didn't work. If that's the case for you, you'll have to go over to Aptoid and do an update. Make sure you pick YouTube for Android TV. Once installed, then you should be good to go. And yes, 4K video does work. And real quick, we'll see if there's a firmware update. And we're on the current one. Okay, let's back out of this and take a peek at this PD Explorer. This is basically just a file explorer. It'll bring up all the drives on your network and your attached storage. Now, just an FYI, before you attach your drives to the Zipidi, you will have to put your video files in a folder named Movies in order for the Zipidi to add it to the library. If you have all your movies in a root directory of your drive or in a folder not named Movies, then it's not going to show up in the Zipidi's library. Same thing for TV shows and music. Now we're going to go and check out the Videos app. 
Here you can search for a movie by letter. This is everything that comes up for the letter N. For TV shows, I have Friends, which is my wife's favorite show, and I have Seinfeld. They are organized per season. The Zipedia will organize it on its own. Movies by category is self-explanatory. Here's everything I've got for romance. Here's top rated movies, and here we have sagas. There's an unseen list, currently watching list, and some more shortcuts for the Explorer and the music apps. All right, now we can head over to the movies app. You can see I've got five pages of movies with all their cover art and they're alphabetically sorted. You can also see how fast scrolling through the list is. Now if you hit the menu button, it'll bring up some more settings that you can change within this app. Here you can see the list of directories and you can add another directory here as well. So if you plugged in another drive, all you have to do is select it and the folder that you placed all the movies in. And as I said before, it should be in a folder called Movies. Click Add the folder and you'll be good to go. Under this section, you can change the theme. By default, it comes with the classic theme. If we back out of this, it's going to reload the theme, which takes a few seconds as you can see. And as you can see, instead of the silver background, it's now red. The list of movies has also changed from the poster wall to only two lines. If we go back into the settings, we can change it from two lines over to four. I prefer the silver personally and the poster wall, so I'm going to change it back. I would like to see in the future some more theme options. Okay, here you can specify whether or not the Blu-ray menu shows up when you hit the play button. Or it's going to ask you if you want to access the menu or you can just skip straight to the movie. Alright, here we've got some more playback options which are self-explanatory. Under the Identification tab, you can change the language and choose where the Zipedi pulls its file information from. For movies, you have either IMDB or TMDB. You can change this for the TV and the music selections as well. Okay, I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of the other relevant options here. Let's say you add more movies on your storage. You can come in here and hit Start Identification, and then it'll start doing a search for all the new content that you just added. Configure Overscan is where you can set up the home menu to fit your screen. If you couldn't tell, mine is in a letterboxed format since I'm using a 239 by one projector screen. You can have it fill the entire screen by adjusting it here. There's also some built-in test patterns to help you tweak your image. For contextual actions, if you want, you can manually edit the movie's information yourself. Let's say you took a 3D movie and remixed it with an Atmos soundtrack. You can go in here and change that information manually yourself. So that's a pretty cool feature. If you want to see everything in your collection, you can check out the collection stats and it'll show you everything in categories. Let's jump into Alita Battle Angel. When you select it, it'll bring up all the pertinent information. Release date, aspect ratio, audio format, etc. 
click play and it'll ask if you want to show the Blu-rays menu or not. From here on, I'll be recording from my screen since I can't record movies straight from the HDMI output. You know, copyright and all that. You're going to have to disregard the screen blanking out. This is what happens on the JVC projectors when the color filter slides into place. It's not the Zipedi's fault. So there you have it. As requested, it does indeed play back Blu-ray menus. This is the Alita 4K Blu-ray in case you were wondering. All the options work just as if it was a normal hard copy, and Dolby Atmos works as well. Once the movie starts playing, there are two different user interfaces with different options. If you start the movie by selecting Show Menus, the GUI will look like this. You'll see the audio track number, the number of subtitles, video codec and frame rate, resolution, title, and chapter number. If you start the movie by selecting Not to Show the Menus, the GUI will be a stripped down version of the previous one. Although if you tap the menu button, you'll get more options here. There's the subtitle options, the audio tracks. If you're playing a 3D file that's either side by side or top and bottom, you can turn that on from here. Here you can adjust aspect ratio. You can select the chapters and you can check out the file properties here. And you have a bunch of other settings under advanced. All right, let's say you chose to show Blu-ray menus. You can see that these options are more in line of what you'd get on a standard Blu-ray player. You don't get the different subtitle options, 3D options, or aspect ratio settings. Those features I just mentioned are more for files like MKVs, MP4s, AVIs, rather than straight Blu-ray rips or ISOs. Well, since I've had this PD in my system, I haven't run into any issues where 4K menus didn't work. I also didn't have issues with 3D Blu-ray menus not working either. And yes, for all the 3D fans out there, 3D looks great. It's just as good as on any standalone Blu-ray player. As for 4K playback, I honestly had a hard time finding any differences between the Panasonic and the Zipedi. In this shot here, you can actually see more highlight detail on the Zipedi, where the Panasonic is a bit blown out. To be fair now, I can tweak the Panasonic's HDR optimizer to even things out, but straight out of the box, the Zipedi is looking pretty impressive. Shadow detail looked the same. They both had smooth gradational tones with no crush or no banding, although the Zipedi seems a little warmer overall. As for sharpness and detail, I'm going to call it a tie. To my eyes, I didn't see any stair-stepping or little jaggies. The very fine details are present on both. No posterization, no banding. I suppose if you were watching this on a 65 or 75, 85 inch TV, you'd probably think they were the same player. Next thing I want to see was how good the upscaling was. Here's a shot of the DreamWorks logo in the beginning of Anchorman. First one is the JVC doing the upscale. This one is the Zipedi doing the upscale. I think it's pretty clear the Zipedi is doing an excellent job of smoothing over jagged edges around the words and cleaning up the color gradations in the clouds. I should also point out at no time did any 1080p Blu-ray ever look like it was native 4K by upscaling. Now the disclaimer. I'm not a professional calibrator or technician. I'm just a home theater enthusiast like many of you guys watching this video. I'm just relaying here what I'm seeing in person. With a different display, you might see something different than me. With that being said, I do have a couple minor issues to point out. First being 3D playback. There are certain times where the left and right eyes are reversed. So instead of having objects in the foreground and things in the background, everything would be in reverse. So foreground objects would be pushed back and background objects would be pushed forwards. You'll end up with a big headache, literally. There is a setting in the menu where you can reverse the eyes, but I have noticed it doesn't always work. In fact, most of the times I've had this problem, it didn't work. The fix was to move the 3D video depth slider and all would be back to normal. It's happened more than a few times and this always fixed it. Number two would be no support for forced subtitles. Take for instance, Avatar. 
If you were watching the movie and never seen it, and the Navi were talking, you might not realize they're actually saying something important. So you would have to go in and turn on the subtitles. Most of the time it works if you do it manually. In the case of Avatar, if you turn on the Navi subtitles, it also turns on the English subtitles as well. So now you've got the Navi subtitles whenever they're supposed to pop up, and you'll always have the regular subtitles going too. You can't have one or the other. I think Avatar is one of those rare movies that it does it with, and it can be very annoying. Good thing is, there aren't a ton of movies with four subtitles. It just sucks when you need them to work properly. Number three is no metadata. This may or may not be relevant for a lot of people, but for folks that have TVs that have dynamic tone mapping, like some of the LGs, those TVs rely on metadata to process their HDR tone mapping on the fly. Without the information off the movie file, then your display won't be able to use that feature. And number four is no Dolby Vision. If you're a projector owner, then this doesn't pertain to you. If you have a TV with Dolby Vision, then it could be a deal breaker since you've paid for that feature. Maybe it comes in a future iteration, I'm not sure, but as of right now, there is no Dolby Vision support. So the question is, should you get a Zipidi or should you get a Kaleidoscape or should you just stick with Kodi? First off, if we're comparing the Zipidi to the Kaleidoscape, they're totally different. The only thing that is the same is the fact that they both play movies. How you get the movies is what's different. Clydescape is something like eight or nine grand, so for many, that already rules that out. Positive thing is that when you buy movies, you download them straight to the Clydescape and you're done. It's the same or better than physical media quality. You don't have to rip the movie, then find a place to store all the discs. The Zipidi, you will have to buy the disc, you will have to rip it, and you'll have to copy it over to the Zipidi. It's not hard to do, but I know some folks would rather just download and be done. They both have very nice user interfaces, but the Kaleidoscape is more polished and just a lot more fluid. It's also very user friendly, so you don't have to be very tech savvy to use it. It's like Kaleidoscape is Apple to Zipidi's Android. The Zipidi does have a very nice UI, but it can be a little jerky sometimes. If you're an Android user, then you probably know what I'm talking about, especially with this older build of Android that's in the Zipidi. Now, if you take price into consideration, you'd hope that a nine grand movie player would function better than a thousand dollar one, and you do get what you pay for. As for movie watching, you might be better off with the Zipidi since there are a lot of titles on the Kaleidoscape that might be in 4K, but not have Dolby Atmos or DTS-X. Whereas if you're ripping your own movies, you'll have exactly what comes on the disc. Audio and video quality wise, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between the two. As far as comparing this to Kodi, I would 100% pick this over Kodi. Don't get me wrong, Kodi is a great front end, but you do have to put a lot of time into getting it set up just the way you like it. I do have a dedicated PC with Kodi that I've been using for years, but it doesn't play 4K backups or 3D backups without workarounds. The Zipidi, it just works, and having 3D playback was a big deal for me. Less time messing around with Kodi and more time watching movies. One more comparison I'd like to point out is against the Oppo 203, 205. Again, quality wise, I don't think you'd be able to see a difference. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. I know that I couldn't. They both play 4K backups, MKVs, MP4s, ISOs, pretty much everything that I own, they both played. Positive thing for the Oppo is that it does retain metadata. It doesn't, however, play 3D ISOs, and it has a very bare bones UI. The Zipidi is just much nicer. So at the end of the day, depending on your needs, one of these solutions is gonna work out best for you. I think the Zipidi falls right there in the middle between the Kaleidoscape and the Kodi or even Plex setups. It does require some work to get going, but it's not a whole lot. It plays Dolby Atmos and DTS-X soundtracks and a ton of other files. It even does 4K60 for you Gemini Man fans. And if you wanna make backing up your movies even easier, I believe Zipidi has a ripper to do the job. Well, those are my thoughts on the Zipidi Pro 4K HDR. Have you guys seen one? Have you used one? And how do you think it stacks up against the Kaleidoscape or Kodi? Let us know in the comments section. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you found this useful. And if you're not a subscriber, then tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.